Hey all, this is a recap of week number 10 of 26 of this 2022 build season at OG Foundation in Elodium. We had a couple more deaths in the family, unfortunately, uh, but it was resolved today. Uh, I guess there's just one warning that at the very end of the video, there's a... Uh, there are some graphic images, um, so in relation to nature and uh, just a just a little bit of forewarning. But uh, yeah, enjoy this uh, proof of work video, and until next week, that's all. So the goal for today is to bury this here drain pipe. So it's gonna be a good bit of pickaxing. And uh, just got to figure out the best way to lay the dirt and the gravel and any kind of weed barrier thing. But here's just a before picture and I'll get to work. So I've got like probably 90, 95% of the trench dug. It gets a little bit confusing over here because it's not really a trench. But it's pretty much all sloped except for a little bit here, but I'm tired of doing this. So I'm basically <laughs> going to start at the low end and start adding the gravel. And then, because the thing is, every time I, the way that this hose thing pipe is, every time you move it, it messes with the other stuff. So I'm going to get it graveled in up to like here. And then I'll figure out the slope of the rest of it. And then it's going to take a lot of gravel in this middle area also because it's not trenched. But, um, yeah, just getting a shot before the before the gravel, basically. It goes up to here, kind of without a trench in this section. Chickens are doing their best to sabotage everything I've done. And then uh, kind of gets a trench right here. So... Most of this ground here should either slope to the pipe or basically there's one area right here where um, there will be more absorption in the ground basically, but there shouldn't be a low point in the pipe basically. But so I'll figure that out like with rocks and other things as I work my way out from here to get the slope out. Um, so that's it for now. So, it's backfilled up to here by the tree, which is a relative high point because I don't want to cut into the roots too bad. So, I basically, I've got to add a good bit of dirt over here. And I've been meaning to remove this one tire here. I've mentioned it a couple times on these videos. This top tire here is all slanted and wasn't done properly. So I'm going to remove that tire, cut the dirt in, and that'll also make a little bit of headspace for the gate. Um, so at some point I'll build a gate. But for now I'm just going to remove this tire and move some of the dirt over there to raise the ground level up in that low spot. So the next step that has revealed itself is this support column this raw iron support column which is mortared into a bucket and kind of anchored into the ground needs to get mortared to this support column which I found washed up on the side of the lake which is like a piece of concrete that was wrapped in steel or something I don't know what it was from but it's um, losing structural integrity so by filling this gap in between the two with mortar, it'll allow both to be reinforced. So uh, I'll do that with some rocks and uh, yeah, and then carry on moving the dirt. Hey chickies. So I didn't get uh, too far over here. But about halfway up, uh, and I might dry stack the next half and then throw 
whip mortar at it, uh, which will make it go faster. This over here, I decided to mortar this, this whole gravel river here. And um, you might think, well, how will it work as a drain if it's mortared over? But the water will figure out how to get in there. Um, and more importantly, the chickens won't destroy it, and the fallings, all the leaves and seeds from the tree won't get in there and clog up the gravel and the drain. So I think this will be a good, a good balance. And I didn't realize until afterwards that if I, uh, if I do kind of sculpt the thing itself, it might just be like a drain pipe on top, and then I'll have a drain pipe underneath also. It'll be like a double drain. Um, but yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this, and the timing of it is perfect because it's the end of the day. And I put the dog inside, and the chickens are away, so no one's going to walk on it and sabotage my efforts, which the chickens always tend to do. And then I'll just have to figure out this section tomorrow. So it's the next day, and that's cured enough to walk on, so um, it's like a checkpoint. Checkpoint so the chicken, chickens don't destroy the, the gravel river up to there. And then I uh, put an elbow on this thing, which is the drain for that little bit there. And got that sloped over to here, so that it'll run off into the other drain essentially. And then this is all sloped now and ready for gravel on section two. Okay, so part two is all graveled up. It's kind of raised up from the dirt, but the dirt is sloping to drain underneath, but it has to be raised up to cover the pipe. And I guess I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the other one. I'm gonna mortar the whole thing and uh, I don't know what else. Maybe I'll just leave the dirt part open and then that can uh, be where the chickens do their scratching and the tree leaves do their accumulating and the, the ground can absorb some moisture. But if it just gets too much moisture, if it really pours, then all the water will go out the drain. That's the idea, but um, for now, it will be a challenge to keep the chickens off of it while I do this all, all this mortaring. But I'll check in when it's about done. So after five or six batches of mortar, something like two and a half, three bags, the mortar is complete. Now I just gotta protect it from the animals while it cures. It's all mounded here. There's just that one spot that I'll have to fill. I was able to move the other cinder blocks. And uh, so long as the chickens and other critters don't get at it, I'm very pleased. Good morning. So uh, I got that third tire out of here and I dug this in a bit. So, I'm going to put some gravel there and mortar over that. And then uh, build a little rock wall there. Leading up to the step to the gate. Hey, girl. Which I'm not sure if it's going to go lower than that or not. But I'm going to start with the, uh, the first step. So quick learning lesson to share with the viewer. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to mix this mortar really wet and then to basically pour it on and use the uh, tool to flat, to like spread it in so it'll just like go down into the gravel. But the pouring as I poured it it messed up all the gravel, all the stone that I had packed, just like that liquid stream. Maybe if I would have got it closer, it would have been a more gentle pour. But it ended up messing up my whole plan. 
and so all the rocks got disturbed and I didn't get as much coverage as I wanted so I'm gonna go through and do a second batch now and make it a little thicker and throw it on like I usually do in order to get coverage for the rest of this hi right, guys so I noticed a concerning trend today which is that spot here, Mama, has been picking on this baby. I'm not sure why. Call this one Buttercup. But I just noticed that um, Spot went after her a couple times, so she's being kind of ostracized. And it's a concerning trend. I don't know why. That's something to keep track of. So here's what this little landing looks like now. The rocks that are there are holding down the lath, which is the reinforcing that one uh, weak point, which is the edge of the tire. And uh, just trying to keep the creatures off it. So it seems that buttercup has disappeared it's only been an hour or no a couple hours probably since I last saw it but spot was chasing it off so I suppose but I I picked a berry for it might have been a him that might have been a why But, uh, so I've been looking all over, and I can't find it. And, um, I'm worried that it, that it went off on its own, that a predator got it, or that its mom killed it. But this is what my task has turned into now, is searching for Buttercup. And, uh, I don't know, maybe that's just the natural, what was supposed to happen, something beyond my understanding for why its mom, who was so good for so long, just started ostracizing it and attacking it and now it's nowhere to be found maybe chickens do that with their young males so that there's not too many males I can't say that I understand but last I saw buttercup it was over there the rest of them are over here and it was having to like kind of run away from its mom and kind of looking like it was being independent. So I'm still hoping that I'm going to find it, like that it just went off on its own. And it's still alive, that's what I'm hoping. But I'm also looking around that I might find the dead carcass that its mom killed. But then there's the chance that a predator found some easy food but um oh wait no look aha there's buttercup oh, i love it when that happens buttercup is okay just uh staying apart from the other ones so there's uh there's six cream colored ones Though I'm only seeing, yeah, there's six cream colored ones. There's one behind the tub. There. Two black ones and two brown ones. Oh, there's this brown one who's all brown. There. And then there's Buttercup over here. Staying by itself. But still alive and well. I'm gonna go pick another berry to give Buttercup. So 
So I removed the one cinder block that was left and then mortared over where it was and of course those infernal dinosaurs had to step in the wet mortar like always and then uh, built that one up the rest of the way might have to do more we'll see look what happened chicken attack not only did they walk all over it, but they spilled dirt all over it. And dirt compromises the integrity of the mortar. And I can't dig the dirt out while the mortar's wet. <laughs> but uh, this is just the first coat, so what are you going to do? I did my best. And I'll fix it on the next go around. So while this devastation continues to dry, I am now going to build a stair over here because uh, with the roof here and the way that it's going, there basically needs to be stairs coming down. Well, now that I think of it, I used to have stairs coming on this side of the tree. Well, I still do. I think I'll just put stairs on both sides of the tree. Why not? Just, uh, I think it'll end up making sense that way. Um, so the first stair is, I'm using these as the form. Oh, Ron Paul Liberty Report live. Now I got a cut. There's another attack this morning. Just like 10, 10 minutes ago. One of the attackers was brown and fled over this wall after I came out and scared it off then I came and stood up here and there was a second attacker that seemed like it was orange or something that fled from that direction but um, basically they came over to here and went after the chickens but I don't think they got anyone but I'm going to uh, survey the chicken population, check on the dependents, make sure everyone's alive, count the chicks. This is the only piece of evidence thus far. White feathers. Uh-oh. Gotta count these chickies. So some bad news. It looks like two... Two of the cream-colored chickies disappeared in the morning attack. Pretty sure it was a fox. Which might have been working with a fisher cat. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'm pretty sure the orange thing would have been a fox. Sneaky fox penetrating the courtyard. I'm hoping they showed up, but it's been at least... Uh, a half an hour now and um, the feathers of, on the ground from one were cream colored so we might be down to eight chickies now nature's brutal nature's lessons here's the second piece of evidence another little feather that might have resulted from the attack. So, like, literally being attacked right there and right there as I'm laying in bed right there. This sneaky fox. I think its attack vector was through the small tower. So I'll see what I can do about fortifying that today. Down to eight chickies. So, uh, just doing a step here. Rock, glance it off, applying the mortar, and I'll fill in some of these holes. 
And then pivot to security. So we stop taking losses, hopefully. So I decided to make a triple arch out of this structure because um, the way of the land is that more weight is sitting on this column than that column. And the way that that arch is doesn't uh, reinforce it all that much vertically. Um, so between reinforcing the bottom and adding this arch here, which is going to have a lot of surface area on the side, as you can see, it goes all the way down there. Um, this middle arch will do a lot to bond these two pillars together so that they um, stay together as far as the weight distribution and stuff and um yeah because it's a dirt hillside here and the heavy things will want to move down and settle so um this will benefit that and then uh, now i'm going to do some security things since uh critters keep getting in and attacking the chickens i'm going to uh, start by stapling chicken wire to the bottom of the fence so that critters can't get through underneath the fence and then I'm gonna build a gate at the end there in between the fence and the tire wall even though that wasn't the vector of attack for the last one that was the vector of attack for the one who came at night on uh, on two occasions now at least so uh, that's uh, that's that for now hey girl she was missing for a moment after the attack, the fox attack this morning. I think she was the one who I saw that looked like a fisher cat going in one direction. And then I noticed the orange creature going the other direction. So I don't think the, fo I don't think the fox and the fisher cat were working together. I think she just got scared by me and jumped over the tire wall while the fox seemingly escaped through the small tower. Which, after I do these two projects, I think I'll focus on reinforcing the security of, and maybe the integrity of, the small tower. Check it out. This is the uh, first step I made over here. So I had the cinder blocks there and took them off. I just wanted to show you how cool this side looks. I didn't even use the cardboard to protect the cinder block. So I just didn't bring the mortar all the way up to the block as I would do my layers. So you can see there's like one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, something like that. So the layers are keeping it in place. And now I can just smear on a coat for the front face. And it's a pretty solid uh, first stair. Just needs another coat on top to smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna do, I think, the second coat the same way, or the second step, kind of the same way, if I can get the cinder box up there, all right, and uh, kind of get around that root there, so yeah, I'll give you another shot after I smear over the rocks. Uh, as promised, here's how it looks with a coat of mortar, so this would be less than a bag of cement, definitely, it's probably like a half bag of cement altogether just with what I just put on and then the little bit I did building up so it's like a five dollar five dollar stair it does need um, another uh, like finish coat and everything but um, I will let that get dry enough so that I can put the cinder box on and do the next one before I get to any finishes so here's how the security measures are going so far. We've got this fence all chicken wired up so that the critters can't get under it. And then over here, currently framing in a gate to go between there. And um, I just got that this box thing initially screwed. So now I'm going to um, put hinges on it and re put some reinforcements on 
and then I'll staple all the chicken wire on and put a little hook on and then I just got to fill in these holes with a bit of lath stapled to the wood probably screwed as well and then integrate it into this beam so that becomes all solid or a mortar um, a mortar connection so that'll be next as you can see the lath is all prepped to make the bond between the 2 by and the tire pillar and now I will just wet it down and apply some mortar so after a uh, I'll try to grab block this on there after a coat of mortar you can see the holes on the right between the 2 by and the tires are all full and the gate has chicken wire so now this whole corner here is all critter safe all the way up to the next pillar where there's a gap and uh, over here I added the rest of the batch to this mini tunnel so it's got got a good start to it got a little bit up top and uh, a lot on the sides. So, uh, yeah, that'll take a little while. But I'm uh, happy with how this is coming too. So the chickies are getting their first night without their mom. Their mom left them and went to the other coop. Probably after the trauma this morning with the fox. Maybe you catalyzed it. And she's like, I've had enough of this motherhood responsibility. I'm going back to the other chickens. So, the eight chickies remaining are all going to be by themselves tonight for the first night. Two of them are starting to get pretty independent. One of them was pretty sure they were going to stay in the tree. I had to talk it down. Raven, the mostly all black one on the top right. And then Buttercup on the bottom right has been forced to be independent because his mom basically charges him whenever he's around. I'm assuming it's a he. Um, and then we'll see in the morning how interested Spot is in uh, being a mother again. If she lets them follow her or, or what. We'll see in the morning. So it's Sunday morning, here's Spot right here, who's now hanging out with Dino, the rooster. She's done being a mama. So the chickies are on their own. She was actually, she, she acted kind of surprised at first. See, she still runs away from Mimi. She acted kind of surprised at first that they didn't go right to following her, but I guess they got the idea pretty quick. And she charged a couple of the cream colored ones to make sure they're not gonna they're not gonna follow her. Hey girl. But chicks are all independent now. I guess that's just uh That's that. Oh Mean we got shagged. Poo. <laughs> but they all seem to be doing good. One thing I noticed about this kind of gate is that it's kind of the shape of Vermont. And then the supports in the gate kind of make a K. Which is my middle initial now. Though so it used to be my first and my last initial. But anyways, now you can just get a little better view with the lighting as it is. Well, you can't really see the chicken wire super well, but it's there. But you can see this uh, this bond a little bit better with this lighting. So, uh, yeah. It is Sunday, and so far, spending my time weeding, got this all 
garden path weeded. Just a little holy basil on the right there and some strawberries. It's really satisfying weeding and removing all of the plants which don't provide, which I'm not in symbiosis with essentially. And leaving the, the basil and the, the sweet leaf wild green and the strawberries. And the raspberries and the black raspberries and as opposed to planting with the uh, with the perennials it's a destructive process of destroying all the other things like here right here we've got some this is a sweet leaf green it's like uh, I don't know what to describe it as but it's just really sweet and then there's some strawberries at the base of a outcropping of black raspberries, which is at the base of a apple tree. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of similar to gardening, but whereas, I mean, it's part of gardening, but oftentimes when you think of gardening, it's like, oh, we're planting things and creating new life, but actually creative uh, destruction or selective destruction weeding out all the other things can also be really satisfying and it causes the uh what remains the berries and whatnot to thrive even more and that's not even to get into the pruning which i've been getting into in the tomato bed over there but anyways that's all for now This right here is a good dog. The work of a cooperative community. Where'd it go? When the predator comes, you got defenses. And motherfucker dies. Good job, Leo. Good boy. That's a good boy. And that is a dead raccoon. Oh, oh, it's still dying here. It's having its last gasp of breath. Sorry about that, raccoon. I hope you understand. You brought this upon yourself. By predating upon my family. Otherwise, I'd mean you no harm. But you killed three chickens now. And no more will you kill. Family safe. You rest in peace, critter. That's a good boy, Lou. Yeah, he's a little dog. Raccoon moved in. He probably was living under the shipping container. That's enough. And we got a raccoon to bury today. So it was a, it was the raccoon after all. It wasn't the Kit Kat. And the raccoon might have been working with the fox, because I'm pretty sure I did see a fox. But it was the raccoon who went over the wall. It's a young raccoon. But certainly capable of killing chickens. And it was coming right over the tire wall again into the courtyard. The defenses I had made did nothing. But Mr. Lewis, such a good boy. Yeah, he is caught on to him, saw there was a predator, I was doing all sorts of funky stuff in the bush, so I looked over the tire wall and I basically was right in this dude's face and went around, opened the gate to look for him, Lou ran him down, and he had some screams as he went, but the chickens are safe. In general, I love the natural creatures. But when they come for our family, then they become the enemy. And there's only one thing to do, really, is to protect our family from the enemy. 
So anyways, that's enough for the video. But predator's problem solved. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, there's a, I'm going to figure out how to wall off underneath that shipping container so that it doesn't become a, an attractive home to critters like this here, raccoon. But first, I'm going to bury it. The cute critter. I gotta protect the family. Here lies Xavier the raccoon. He got a name post mortem. Killed by Lewis in defense of our family. Having been charged with the death of three chicks and being caught in the act of hunting for another. May it rest in peace and welcome to rejoin or to join our family in another life if it can form a symbiotic relation. Otherwise, may it rest in peace.